in to the hottest station on the planet. Resistance is futile. The revolution has begun. You're listening to Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo, here's your host, best-selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to another episode of Rebelpreneur Radio. This is the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon, and I'm a marketing strategist. I'm a media consultant. I talk a lot about marketing, but let me tell you something. If you don't make any sales, you're not going to have a business. Nothing happens in business until somebody sells something. So marketing strategy is great, but at some point, somebody has to reach out and figure out a process and a way to contact leads to follow up with prospects and to close the deal. So today's expert is really going to help us dial that in. He believes many companies focus on marketing, but they leave the most important part of the business out. And that important part is sales. I'm speaking with Ben Brown with 360 Sales Consulting. He is a father of two young children. He has a bachelor's degree in business management and over 23 years of experience in the sales field. He is the best-selling author of the book, Master the Art of Closing the Sale, the game-changing 10-step sales process for getting more clients and referrals. That sounds right up our alley. So, uh, Ben, welcome to Rebel Renew Radio. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real pleasure, and I I want to find out what we need to do to make more sales and close those deals. But first, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, You are a a military guy, and you've got quite a bit of experience in sales as well. But uh, tell us your story. How did you get interested in sales, and, and what's your background? After I left the Marine Corps, I was doing personal training. I'm a Gulf War veteran, and I got out in 1994 into the real world and started in physical training and started uh, in actually gym's gym and doing personal training and then was actually recruited, I guess like most people, into because of my personality to actually do sales. And that's when the bug really hit, and I realized that I could actually have an ability to write my own checks based upon my sales skill. And I had a very good mentor that brought me into sales where I didn't have that negative aspect of what I thought it was or what it should be. I was properly trained in that, in that aspect of the uh, gym sales because every sale is kind of different, but all the same. Uh, and that's where it actually took off. And ever since then, everything that I've done in business has been around sales, either from a sales rep, sales management, uh, recruiting, hiring the HR department for salespeople. And now my specialization is working with sales teams and actually building. I, can, I built a couple of sales teams from scratch for companies who had products they couldn't move. Mm-hmm. Um, so hiring is a very key point and time saver for a lot of people. So I started doing that as well. So everything, three, that's why 360 comes into place because I can audit, I can teach, I can hire when it comes around that. So Uh, Having that knowledge and skill of knowing what a person is capable of doing and what I can bring them up to be when it comes in sales skills is kind of a knack of what I do. Mm. Very interesting. And and what a great uh, what a great background there in in the Marines to to teach you the importance of all the things that uh, we need to be doing in our business, setting goals and objectives and creating the mission and then taking massive action on a daily basis. You mentioned something about having a personality for sales. Describe what that personality is. Can anyone learn sales or is it just for a certain type of personality? Well, the facade that people have is that uh, he has a personality to sell everything or he can talk to anyone is where people come in or certain outward. Um, So introverts can sell as well because every sale is basically a skill based on steps. Mm -hmm. And so when the personality comes out and you have no steps, you'll make sales just based on personality, but you'll miss a lot because you don't have any steps 
whereas an introvert will focus on the steps and be more consistent. Um, so a new person can always sell an older person because it is based on fundamentals. And the fundamentals, when you put your personality or that extroverted on it, it becomes more like fire, right? But introverts sell very well because they're focused on the steps. Mm -hmm. And the steps is what makes you more consistent and understand your mistakes in the next sale because it's all a numbers game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love that. Well, that's encouraging because... Uh, believe it or not, I'm kind of an introvert and I, I maybe that's why I'm in I'm a marketing strategist as opposed to a sales manager or an actual sales person. But uh, let's face it, if you have a business, if you own a business, you run a business, uh, you got to learn how to sell. Yeah, I mean, and it's not just selling mm -hmm. customers, it's uh, selling investors, selling partners, selling the bank on why <laughs> they should loan you money. Uh, so sales mm -hmm. is, is really, um, it's essential to everything that, w that we do in our life and in our business. Someone has to sell something before anything happens. Mm -hmm. What are, Absolutely. what are most businesses missing when it, when it comes to sales? They don't realize that it is a process and that it is a skill. And so most salespeople, when they come to an organization are, don't become successful because they don't have enough tools. They don't have enough training. Mm. Uh, they get a script. They don't give them an education of what sales is about because it's not ta taught in high school or college. It's only taught at the company level. People leave in good sales organizations and go the better or create their own. But there's a number of organizations out there that don't need any marketing. They just have sales and they know it because they get referral and testimonials. So marketing is great. Um, but when you don't have sales skills, you need to do more marketing, spending more money being ex experimental because there's two different aspects of sales. There's being proactive and there's being reactive. And so if you're a great marketer, you write a good sales funnel, a good copy, then your customers will come to you and you get to pick or they get automated into a sales process where you don't have to contact them. Proactive is where you can pick up the phone, take a lead and then close it. So a lot of people don't like to do that. So they rather market their butt off and just <laughs> let wherever happens happens until competition comes in or say an economy drops or something else happens in it where they have to realize that they have to be more proactive to continue the income coming in. Uh, and that's when the phone calls come to me. And so, you know, we need to get more sales. We need to look more at it. So everything has a system in a business, accounting systems, hiring systems, marketing systems, but very few companies don't get to it as, until they need it, which is a sales system. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. You, you know, there's a lot of people that I talk to. Well, and, and I guess not just people I talk to, but even when I look at, for example, um, job postings or help wanted over the last several years, I often see businesses looking to recruit people to do sales and marketing, and they put sales and marketing together in the same job description. And I think that there is a misconception that sales and marketing are pretty much the same thing. I think you could really give us some valuable insight by defining <laughs> for our listeners, what is the difference between marketing and sales? <laughs> okay. I like to keep things simple. All right. So I'm glad you asked that question. Sales, well, put it this way, marketing is what gets attention and brings the customer into your organization, whether it be a billboard, commercial ad, because the purpose of a sale is not to sell somebody. The purpose of a sale is to get somebody to move. All right. So marketing starts that movement. Hmm. Now, once that potential client penetrates the skin of your company. I put it that way, which means they send you an email, they call, they open a door to the front. Soon as they penetrate the skin of your company, that is when sales takes over. Okay. Well, that, that's actually very useful. So marketing is about attracting and, and bringing people into the orbit or, or into the, the, um, 
the the influence, the sphere of influence of your business or your brand. And then everything that happens after that is a sales process. And that's why they call it a sales funnel, where you send them out a number of emails, which puts them into a sales process to conv- convince them uh, non-personally to click on something and buy. Hmm. But when they call or send an email and you respond by phone, you know, or an actual email written by a person, that's when it turns into a sales process. And most companies don't have that. They love sales funnels. It made it easier. We're in a great economy right now. People are just buying things. Hey, look at Amazon. You don't have to do <laughs> nothing but point and click. And salespeople will always be around. And so once the economy drops, a lot of these companies will have to revert back to being more proactive because it's not as easy. They're not taking low-hanging fruit anymore. Yeah, I think that's really, um, really insightful um, for these these larger companies and and even for smaller businesses who who kind of take for granted the good times, and they coast and and business just seems to fall in their lap. Uh, but when you have mm-hmm. difficult times, you have recessionary periods or something changes in the industry, the, the, the business goes through a different season or a different cycle, uh, then people begin to get concerned and they start thinking about <laughs> these sales processes and how, how do we go back and, you know, how do we get more sales? And, and that's that's when people yeah. turn to you to come in and to close the big deal. Is that right? Well, I, they, I, they come in for me because they realize there's a problem. Mm-hmm. Something's not right. We're not doing what we used to. Something. Every company analyzes things. They bring in uh, consultants. Uh, so most of the time, I come in as a consultant to analyze where the problem is. What are you guys doing wrong? What are you missing? And most of the time in most businesses, small or large, I can find normally about three or four things they're not doing that they're losing sales right now. Yeah. Right? What, what would some well, of those things not, be? Not the money that you... Yeah, what what would be the, uh, the, the top ones? <laughs> <laughs> Qualifying, generating referrals, have a good CRM, um, basic training, uh, practicing, which sales is a skill. They don't practice it. They practice on their customers, uh, lack of confidence, uh, time management. All these type of things is doing is generating sales. You, you know, you need to create a conveyor belt. I'll give you a small example. One of my best students right now, her name is Michelle. She's 66 years old. She's been running a company for 17 years, reached out to me about two months ago. She makes you know, well over six figures in her business. And just in a small conversation, she read my book. She understand there was a problem. I talked to her for a little while, realized she was never proactive in her business. She just sent proposals. Hmm. And so within 30 days, she was afraid of sales, didn't understand, didn't think she had the confidence to do it. And true to form, within the next last 30 days, we've generated in addition about about $37,000 addition because she's now calling, she's closing, she's putting the sales process together. She understands sales is not a negative thing. She realizes that she needs the confidence and her confidence in her business is to help people. And by helping them, you figure out what their problem is and they can help you. Hmm. So the main thing in sales is, do you like or love your product? And if you have that, and if it does work, and you're not trying to rip people off, it's your job to help sell them or put them through a sales process to see if you can help them. So your main key is to get on to your next customer to help them as well. And that's the key of business. I really love that. And and it it um, there's such wisdom there if we'll learn to look at sales in a different way. And a lot of the, the people mm-hmm. that I work with and the people that I interview – uh, they're coaches, they're, they're consultants. Um, they, they want to change the world. And m- most of the people that I interview are not like this, but I, I have had conversations with, uh, with clients who, who want marketing help or they want sales help. Uh, and in, in the sense that they want more clients, they want to, they want to get more business, but they want to make a bigger change in the world, have greater impact. Uh, but they mm-hmm. believe that if they just got a, a, a good product and a good service, that all of these people are just going to kind of know that they're there and refer business to them. And 
they are really <laughs> concerned about <laughs> they're concerned about coming across as salesy. I don't want to be salesy. I just want to uh, to help people, and I just want to change the world. But I don't like sales, and I don't like doing anything that is okay. salesy. Now you say that there's okay. no such thing okay. as salesy. Okay. There's no such thing as being salesy. Hmm. It's a myth. So most of the time when I work with people, I have to change the mindset. Because remember, sales is not taught in high school. It's not taught in college. It's something you learn either when you go into a company, they train you, or you start on your own company and you realize you need to understand what a sales skills is. Negative things, people remember. They don't remember the good things. So when stuff is flying off the shelf and you're doing good, you're not thinking of being salesy, right? It's when you have to go out and ask for the sale. <laughs> so I have to start off from the beginning. What is a sale? Right? What is a sale? And people think, oh, it's trying to get somebody to buy something. It's trying to get somebody to, you know, buy something. It has nothing to do with money. Sales is all around us. Sales is to get somebody to move. Small movements to get them to understand how you can help them. So that's click on this, buy this, look at this brochure, look at the billboard, pick up the phone. And eventually, after all of the steps are done, and we're talking a number of steps, the main key is to reach in your pocket, back pocket and give money. Mm -hmm. When people give you money, that means they trust you. So you're giving a tour of your sales process to them every time to confirm that, first of all, you want to help them, that they need help, they can afford to help. And as you help them, it's going to be a pleasurable experience because the main key that I teach in the end of my sales is to generate a testimony or a referral. The sales is the afterthought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I get testimony or referrals, my business grows by 40%. But most people don't do that. They're just happy to get the sale, hang the phone up, move on to the next person. <laughs> right? And, and that probably explains right. why most businesses go out of business in the first five years. And most coaches and consultants uh, d don't make enough money to replace their income. It's, it's this big thing with uh, sales that they're struggling with. What can people begin to do in their business? Um, maybe two or three important things, steps that they can take right now to start to get a handle on on the very important processes of, of sales in their business. What do you recommend? To be, to be aware, right? To understand I don't know everything, especially if you haven't been taught or been through a thorough class. There's businesses out there that I know that don't do any marketing. They don't need it. Everything is sales driven, right? Mm -hmm. So marketing just puts fire on it. And people say, well, I don't know if you can help us. We do this or we <laughs> sell this. And the first thing I tell, I don't care what the hell you sell. It doesn't matter. Simplify it. It's sales. Mm -hmm. If you get complex into a specific product or niche or whatever with sales and you don't understand the general aspect of it, then it's not going to work. It's got to be simple because you have to do it. You don't look at it, read it, look at it on CD-ROM, look at the video because the <laughs> only thing that works in sales is practicing it, right? And most people are afraid to practice or don't practice. And they don't know what they did wrong and they get frustrated and all this stuff. And they think I'm being manipulative. And it's like, it's very more simple than that. My student and I have right now, I love her. She's six, six years old. She's making more money than she ever did. She never done sales like that. She understands it. Not only she understands it, she's doing it. So she's giving me feedback on what she's doing wrong. The best salespeople are the ones who are more critical of themselves. It's not about you. It's about your customer. And the difference between a good and a great salesperson is the number of questions that you ask. Hmm, that's interesting. So, so what, what is that? Is that like a consultive sales process? Is that what you're describing? It could be any way you want. If you, th if most of the people who listen to this podcast probably don't know or heard of Barbara Walters, right? She's one of the best interviewers in the world. Why is she a best interviewer? because she's comfortable with the people she interviews. They know her, they know, like, and trust. So she can ask the more difficult questions, right? Her Barbara Walters special every New Year's, she, people say, I don't, I'm gonna do this interview, but please don't make me cry. Cause you know, she's coming with it, right? <laughs> but she has a knack for making them feel comfortable. So one of my steps is basically being able to um, connect and relate. You can't ask difficult questions of people that you don't connect with. And you need to ask those difficult questions to realize if you can help them or not. 
So most people are just pitchy. It's all about me. We've been in business this long. Our product does this. We do this. <laughs> we do that. Yeah. And I say, and then I think anytime you say the word you think, and I said in business and especially in sales, you're not paid to think, you're paid <laughs> to do. <laughs> So don't think, I think that they, and you know, if I ask you why you didn't get the sale, well, I think, I don't want to know. I want you to tell me what process or what step in the process that you messed up with. The biggest thing is to point back at yourself. You did something wrong, not them. They're just customers, right? Mm -hmm. They don't know. So if you didn't convert them and you could help them, what's the problem? And if you can't tell me what the problem is, you're going to do it again and again and again and again, right? I love it. And you have to have a sales system. (laughs) <laughs> that tells you what step you messed up and what you need to practice so you won't do it to the next potential client so you can convert them so ultimately you can get a testimonial and a referral to move on to the next client. So it's a snowball effect. And I see the former Marine coming out. Once a Marine, always a Marine. And I see that <laughs> I see that that drill, that DI, you know, it's like you're gonna do it until you get it right. <laughs> Uh, that that would be so Absolutely. useful. That would be so useful to to a lot of uh, business owners who uh, they, they don't have a plan, they don't have a system, they've never been in any kind of a, of training, and when they go to battle, they're not going to know what to do. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole purpose of mm-hmm. of training. It's it's so that you 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 create mm-hmm. the systems and the processes. Mm-hmm. So that you take the emotion, you take the fear out of what you're doing. And with that, you begin to develop a lot of confidence. And then your prospects can really pick up on on that positive mental attitude. And confidence inspires people to follow you, doesn't it? Well, 60% of sales is confidence, right? Hmm. So I simplify. There's three things you need to do in a sale. Three things, and a lot of people, and you need to do all three of these things at the same time, right? First of all, you need to be present. You need to be calm. You don't get emotional when somebody throws a question at you, you fluster, you see people stuttering, uh, da, 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 da. (laughs) So you need to be present. You also need to know where you're going. You need to be at least one or two steps ahead. Good salespeople are normally four or five steps ahead. They know exactly what they need to say, what questions they need to ask. They practice it. They're never thrown off kilter, which keeps you present, right? Even if you know you're not going to get the sale, it's about being calm, right? And the third and most important is that you need to listen because normally in the conversation, as long as you connect and relate, the prospect is going to give you something what I call golden nuggets. And that goes back to the step four, which is emotional triggers because people buy emotionally. So when I buy a car, I'm not buying a car because it's pretty and because it's, it smells like this. I'm buying a car because they need to get me somewhere because if I don't get somewhere, I'm going to be frustrated. So if I get a good car, I won't be frustrated and won't feel like that. So instead of selling him on the car, I'm going to be like, if I can get rid of the frustration, would you buy the car? Mm-hmm. Right? So people don't dig deep enough. Like Barbara Walters asked the more difficult questions, which gives them more trust. And when people give you money, they trust you. So you quit pitching and you're fast pitching. It's all about me and this and that. You're missing all of these essentials of a sale and you're just going strictly by numbers. If I talk to more people and so that's where marketing comes in. Let's just blanket market everybody and just take whoever comes and just shoot them down with a machine gun. Right. Had to use that, that, that nature, you know, but I'd rather just be individual and talk to people and let them know that I'm human So instead of holding a conversation, I'm talking to you, right? And talking gets things done. Conversation is just a transfer of information. And information does not sell. Uh, You have got so much wisdom, and I can really see all the years, (laughs) all the years of sales. You are a sales veteran, and um, you, you are the author of the book, Master of the Art of Closing the Sale, um, tell us a little bit about that book and, and whatever else that you're working on that uh, you'd like to share with our listeners. Well, the book Mastery Art of Closing the Sale is giving people the essential 10 steps in the sales process. Not every step sales need 10 steps, but there's 10 steps in every sale. So if you're able to understand the concept of what that is, each step of those can normally take a week to two weeks to learn because you can't learn it all in a seminar 
or in a week. It takes time because the brain only remembers 30% and doesn't practice any of it. <laughs> and the key to sales is practicing, right? So people could read a book, get a seminar, and they'll pull something from somebody's book or a sales book, and then they'll try it out like judo, one move. Whereas you need to get a class, you need to go through the belts, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the growth process that you need to take some time. I have to take the negativity out to put the positive really back in. So I got people who've been in sales for 10, 16 years that's doing it all wrong and stubborn. And I have to get that out to understand, you know, this is the way. And everybody has, I don't negate anybody. It's like dojos. If you need to kick butt, you can do karate, jujitsu, Virginia, just, you know, as long as you learn it and learn how to be effective about it, mm -hmm. right? So there's no, my way is the best way, Grant Cardone, Jeff Gettimer. It's just that you need to understand a process and have the discipline to go through it. I different because I relate to people. I use a lot of analogies, sports analogies to get it where they understand it. And eventually within about 30 days, just like my regular clients, they'll wake up and go, I did it and it worked. And I'm like, da -da. now <laughs> the confidence goes back up. Yes. So now let's keep moving. Let's just keep moving. I didn't know I could do that. Or I, I said it and I was scared and they came back and said this and it just, I asked for a credit card and they just gave it to me. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know, this is just what you, you just, <laughs> so I can't say what credit card you want to put it on. I'm like, it's called a close. And if you don't close, you're just wasting your time. You, you ask them to close themselves and people normally don't close themselves. There's yeah. nothing wrong with closing. If you can help them, are you helping them? Yes. Well, close. So, you know, that's the difference between good sales and bad sales, because once you learn that skill, it could be used for good or bad. And most people only remember the bad, hmm. right? Getting ripped off. Somebody sold them on this. They didn't like it. And that happens. But if when you're in business, you can't go into battle, have any of those things. And normally um, I have to get that little guy off your shoulder that's telling you a lot of negative things while you're in a conversation with somebody else or in a sales process. You have to start being in the moment and listen to them. And that's one of the key points of being sales successful. So the book covered all those 10 steps. It gets people to introduce themselves to me the way I do it, simplify it for them, uh, gives them education, some of the things they can do. And so I still do individual. I'm not Grant Cardone. I don't have the big boat yet. So people still can reach out to me individually and I do individual coaching which is a lot of sessions back and forth. We role playing and role playing is where it really, the wheel hits the road. You know, mm -hmm. when I tell you what you did wrong or I listen to your calls and I'm able to pick things out. One of my clients, he take one of his, you know, live sales and we picked out like three things right then and there, even though I've been teaching him for a couple of weeks, now I got something to work with. Why did you do that? And he changed it and went back in and was like, oh my God, I didn't know I did all this. You don't know what you sound like. Yeah. <laughs> right. So a lot of people don't record themselves and know how ugly they look on the phone. It's, it's gruesome. Yeah. <laughs> and so they, they, they just, so one of my first rules when working with me is never assume anything, mm -hmm. never assume that they're, they're qualified, never assume they got money, never assume they don't. It's all ruled out by your sales process. You'll really be surprised. Sales process is, yeah. You'll, you'll really be surprised mm -hmm. at, at how, your assumptions will get you into trouble and, and you will disqualify oh. people that are perfectly qualified. And then the ones that you, you thought were going to be slam dunks, uh, they end up fizzling, fizzling into nothing. Uh, so this has been really, really helpful. And I think encouraging uh, to people who struggle with sales. If our listeners want to reach out to you and find out more about your book and the, and the other things that you have to offer. Um, what's the, um, what, what's your website? Would you share that with us? Yes. It's uh 360, 360 sales consulting.com on there is the book where you can order it and I'll sign it and send it directly to you. Or it's on Amazon. It's called master the art of closing sale by Benjamin Brown. For those who need immediate help, uh, there's two ways they can reach out to me, and that is actually uh, you can use the URL Meet with Benjamin, the whole name, and you can schedule a call there. And I still, at this point, I'm not Grant Cardone, so you can actually call me, which is 863-274-3898, and we can schedule some time if I have to sit down and 
analyze because I interview my clients. So I'm like, I don't take everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, and, and spoken like a true salesman, he worked his phone number in there as well. So multiple points of contact. Uh, this has been really great, Ben, and I, I appreciate you sharing your wisdom with us. Any final thoughts or maybe a big idea you'd like to leave us with? Well, in sales, one of my mottos that I use and it helps in life is, is basically get out of your own way and move. Right. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to sales and also in life, we normal the problems that we go through, especially in sales, is our problem. So you got normally when I work with clients are getting out of your own way, your aspirations, your confidence, all the negative things that you think when you come into the office, whatever in life is most of the problems we create ourselves through anxiety. So, you know, monks spend 18 years just being quiet and they still work on it. I mean, we don't even spend half the time doing that, right? <laughs> we don't spend any time. We're just running. So, you know, meditation came into play. I started doing that years ago. I'm like, this is not going to work. No, it really does work. I'm like, and I'm not one of those guys. So I'm like, just spend time with yourself. Get out of your own way and move. And movement means being willing to fail in life and also in sales you know it's a numbers game but you have to learn from your mistakes and when you start moving if you're scared to use what you learn you don't move um so that's why i interview some of the students are you going to be able to to get out of your own way and move and get over your anxiety and fear and start asking these important questions to help people uh and that normally takes some coaching for some people but I can see a, a bright star from people that I communicate with you know like my last client the one I currently work with you know, who's done, you know, 37,000 in the last month. And I said, you're going to get to 50 before the end of the month. And she will too, because she's mm. closing deals. She never thought about because she never called anybody. Yeah. So just by even just picking up the phone and calling a lead and having that conversation, putting them through a sales process and asking those questions, she's like, I, I, you know, normally it took me two weeks to get the deal. I got it in one hour. And I'm like, yeah, next time just get the card on the phone. She was like, well, I, 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 I have square. I've, I've never asked for a card. I'm like, that's the next level. You will be asking for cards right on the spot. And you're not sending proposals. You're sending contracts. So we changed that. You don't do proposals anymore. That's a waste of time. Yeah. Contracts. Right. So this small little things like that, it changed the mindset because they think being aggressive means meaning being salesy. And once again, salesy is it's a myth. Yeah. Well, th th that's some powerful distinctions there. Uh, from Mr. Benjamin Brown. He is the author of Master the Art of Closing the Sale, the game-changing 10-step sales process for getting more clients and referrals. His uh, popular sales blog focuses on giving great tips and advice for salespeople worldwide. And if you are in a business or if you are running a business and trying to grow a business, you are in sales, whether you like it or not. So you might as well get really good at it by checking out Ben's website, 360salesconsulting.com. Ben, it's been a real pleasure to have you on Rebelpreneur Radio today. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you for the opportunity to share this to the world. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.